fifth round of sanctions against Russia was announced by the European Union on April 8, 2022, and it is believed that actions regarding oil and even gas will be required at some point in the future. Even gas will eventually be required. That is to say, not now, the EU has enacted restrictions that limit the export of products and money from Russia since the start of the conflict in Ukraine. Natural gas is unaffected despite their targeting on banks, businesses and people. Nearly a quarter of the energy used in the EU comes from gas, and Russia, the principal exporter of gas worldwide, accounts for over half of it. Through this network of pipes, Russia provides the majority of its gas to Europe. Nobody purchases more of it than Germany. The greatest economy in the EU, Germany has paid Russia almost 220 million euros per day for the gas since the war of Ukraine started. More than 20 million homes in Germany use gas for heating. In addition, much of the nation's industrial sector depends on it. The German government has opposed any sanctions that would stop the flow of it. The supply of gas cannot be cut off. However, Germany pays the state-owned natural gas firm of Russia every time. The war in Russia is also being funded by it. How did Germany come to rally so much on Russia for something so essential as its energy supply? Why can't they stop? The literal epicenter of the Cold War was Germany. Independent West Germany was divided from East Germany and other Soviet satellite nations following World War II by a militarized border. Germany was in ruins following World War II. However, West Germany's economy had made a stunning comeback by the 1950s. Steel was thriving industry in Germany. However, they required more energy to stop their expanding economy. The Soviet Union has recently found enormous natural gas deposits here in western Siberia. Although they already had a network of pipelines to feel important, so white steeds, expanding those pipelines to serve potential customers in Europe world required a significant infrastructure investment. West Germany then elected a chancellor in 1969 with a new foreign strategy known as Austropolitik, which was centered on bringing the two sides closer together through negotiations and conversation. One excellent chance came from energy, and an agreement was reached between West Germany and the USSR. The West Germany would receive natural gas from the Soviet Union. West Germany would then give premium steel pipes in exchange for extending the pipelines. It was an important 20-year-old contract. It's critical to comprehend how piped natural gas differs from other energy sources in order to comprehend how this agreement locked Germany in. One of the three primary fossil fuels used globally is natural gas along with coal and oil. However, unlike coal and oil may be transported or diverted throughout the globe. Piper natural gas is a regional good that depends on proximity. Gas producers invest millions of dollars to develop pipelines that link them with purchasers in order to transfer it. Gas agreements can connect a buyer's energy infrastructure to the sellers for decades because these pipelines are such substantial and long-term commitments. The Soviet Union constructed a pipeline network to Europe by 1980s, and by the 1990s, it was providing 40% of the gas needed by the Germany. After it, the Soviet Union fell, the former Soviet gas pipelines were taken over by Gazprom, a state-owned company in Russia. The map, however, had been redden. The main pipelines from Russia now passed through the newly independent Ukraine, placing a crucial component of their gas infrastructure on territory they no longer controlled. Russia therefore started developing new ones to diversify the routes to Germany. 
This pipeline through Belarus was completed in 1999. Additionally, the Nord Stream pipeline, which will run directly from the Baltic Sea to Germany, started construction in 2005. In Germany, they also constructed pipelines and established a branch there to run gas storage facilities, including this particular one, which is the among biggest investor in Europe. Now, Russia had three ways to Germany. In addition to German pipeline and storage facilities, gas trading was robust. The relationship between Russia and Europe had also shifted as a result. Gas pricing negotiations broke out between Russia and Ukraine towards the end of 2008. A short while afterwards, Russia cut off Ukraine's gas supply for 20 days. The problem is that, because Ukraine was a significant transit nation, a lot of European gas was also cut off when Russia cut off their gas. Tens of thousands of people lost heat as a result and all these countries experienced a decrease in supply. At least 11 individuals died from freezing to death in Poland. The entire situation alerted Europe. It was now obvious that Russia controlled significant amounts of gas flows into and out of Europe. However, Nord Stream 2 was constructed yet another connection to Russia up Alongside the original Nord Stream, a new pipeline worth $11 billion will be built, doubling the capacity to Germany then in 2040. Russia occupied eastern Ukraine and grabbed Crimea. In relation, the EU imposed several sanctions. Some nations started to gradually wean themselves from Russian gas. But Germany continued to get Russian gas. Germany really imported the most gas ever. Pressure on Germany is growing as the world watches Russia's atrocities in Ukraine continue. It's difficult to replace Russian gas, though Russian natural gas can only be replaced with other natural gas since it has been supplied to homes and businesses for decades without a significant infrastructure change. Germany has few options in the regard. Here in the Netherlands, the greatest European natural gas resource is running out of the gas this year. Gas from Algeria and Libya is used more frequently in those nations. Italy and Spain receive the lion's share of the oil poured into Europe. Azerbaijan and Europe are connected by a southern gas corridor, but it is not moving as much gas as was formerly thought. Liquefied natural gas or LNG is the alternative. This is gas that has been cooled till it is liquid and can be transported anywhere in the world in these enormous ships. However, it is a time-consuming, expensive and extensive solution that needs additional infrastructure. Europe has developed LNG terminals along the coastline over the past 20 years. In the upcoming five years, Germany wants to open three. However, as of right now, none exist. Germany's ultimate goal is to replace all fossil fuels, including natural gas, with renewable energy sources but this will require a significant and expensive shift that won't be finished until 2035. Germans are also calling for action at home. This poll indicates that the majority of Germans back a boycott of Russian gas. However, experts caution that restricting gas imports could trigger a recession that would lose thousands of jobs, but they have made some progress an end was made to the Nord Stream 2 pipeline. They have also cut their reliance on Russian gas by 15% as well as assuming control of the Gazprom business that manages gas operations in Germany. The leaders of the government and industry, though, are still opposed to banning gas altogether. In a rut is Germany and the stakes are larger than ever right now. So guys, this was for today. Give us your thoughts on this in the comment section and if you appreciate our content, please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. Share this video with your family and friends. We will meet you soon in a new video. Thank you. Jai Hind.